This is KFSM-TV, Channel 5, Fort Smith. On June 23rd of this year, the Farmington branch of the Farmers and Merchants Bank was robbed of nearly $8,300. Five days later, 29-year-old Ronald D. Springston of Wheeler was arrested and charged with that robbery. In U.S. District Court today, Springston's attorney, Bill Putman, told the seven-woman, five-man jury that proving his client robbed the bank is the easiest job in the world, but proving he did it willfully, of his own volition, is another matter. Putman contends Springston was under a post-hypnotic suggestion the day he robbed the bank and that he received that suggestion while attending hypnosis sessions to lose weight. According to Putman, in the course of bolstering Springston's self-confidence, Rogers hypnotist Gene Peters told Springston that he could do anything he wanted, that he could even rob a bank. Each side is expected to call expert witnesses in the field of hypnosis and post-hypnotic suggestion. The trial is expected to take about a week. Following yesterday's testimony, the prosecution rested its case against 29-year-old Ronald Springston. Today, defense attorney Bill Putman called Springston to the stand. He testified that prior to the robbery, he was suffering from a form of epilepsy for which he did not regularly take his medication. Putman explained that this nervous disorder, coupled with a post-hypnotic suggestion, resulted in Springston's robbing the Farmington Bank. He was particularly susceptible and that, that when the suggestion was made that he was, in fact, uh, intelligent enough, strong enough, strong willed enough, whatever, to rob a bank, that this acted as a post-hypnotic suggestion in his subconscious mind and created compulsion, which he just ultimately was unable to resist. He had no choice. He had to do it. We don't suggest for one minute that anybody, any hypnotist can go out and hypnotize anybody and make them do something which is criminal, illegal, immoral, or against their will. While attorney Putman did talk to the press today, the professional code of ethics prevented him from allowing his client to do likewise. Springston, I realize these gentlemen are doing their job, but uh, I advise you to make no responses to any questions given to you or made to you by the media. Until this is all over, that'll be a different thing. Then. The case should go to the jury later this week. From Fayetteville, Mike Thomas reporting for the News People. During cross-examination today, defense attorney Bill Putman established that hypnotist Gene Peters does occasionally mention bank robbery to his clients. Peters testified that in order to gain a client's confidence, he tells them that he can't anymore make them do something under hypnosis that they don't want to do any more than he could make them cross the street and rob a bank. However, he denied ever having said that to Ronald Springston. In fact, says Peters, people don't respond to post-hypnotic suggestions by doing things they wouldn't ordinarily do. People basically basically won't do things against their moral or judgment codes. Uh, there are some studies that show people have done things, but that was when they maybe had a great association with the hypnotherapist. They might have spent a number of sessions with that person, but nothing that could ever evolve in a session that might last just an hour. Okay, how many times did Ron Springston see you in a hypnotic? Just one time. Peters said in court that he only uses the bank line with women who want to lose weight. At that, attorney Putman produced a tape recording of a hypnosis session Peters had 10 days ago in which he used the bank line with a client who had come to him to quit smoking. The attorneys are expected to finish their closing statements late this afternoon. From Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People.